periodic table. So I want to just do a brief introduction on how it's, how it's made and it's really actually very useful to have a peri periodic table in front of you because it gives you a lot of answers that you don't really have to memorize. So here's an introduction to it. All right, so the periodic table is divided into uh, groups that are columns that are vertically going across and they go from column one or group one all the way to group 18 and then you have periods that are rows and they go one through seven. So let's just talk about groups first. They're based on valence electrons. So valence electrons are the groups. Now we're going to ignore the middle but uh, based on that the charge is going to be associated to the valence electrons. So the first column has one valence electron so they're going to have a positive one charge because they're going to lose an electron to get to a full outer shell. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, column two has a plus two charge because it has two valence electrons and it will lose two to get a full outer shell. We're going to skip the middle. We're going to go right to column 13. Column 13 is a plus three charge because it will lose three electrons. It has three outer electrons. So it goes one outer electron, two, and three. Outer means valence, so it's the same thing. The middle, 14, doesn't really count as anything because uh, they are in between getting to eight, four valence electrons. You can gain or lose four and still get the same number. So they kind of are in the mix of doing nothing there. We'll talk about them later. Uh, column 15, though, they have a negative three charge. So this means that they would rather gain three because every electron is negative. They're going to gain three to get to eight instead of losing five because they have five valence electrons. Oxygen will want to gain two electrons, so it'll have a negative two charge. And you can see the trend that group 17 uh, will want, uh, has seven valence electrons, so it's one away from having a full outer shell, and it will be negative one charge. Um, they're all trying to get to the last column, which are all very, very happy because they have a full outer shell. So the valence electrons determine the charge. Whoever, whatever is easier to get to a full outer shell, meaning gaining or losing electrons, they'll do that. If you're, for example, group 17, if you are one away, you would rather gain one electron than lose seven to get all the way over to a full outer shell. Now the middle, we don't really they're called transition metals, so they kind of vary. They're all going to be positive because they are metals, and they will lose electrons, but they have different charges, and I will give you those charges in the future. We'll talk about those in another unit. Now let's talk about the periods. Oh, sorry. Let's do an example first. So the charge, how I got the charge, is the protons minus electrons. So let's do an example. So S, which is in column 16, and it is number 16, has 16 electrons because it has 16 protons. It is two away from a full outer shell because the full shell is 18. Now it could go down to 10 because neon has a full outer shell as well, but would it rather lose six, which would give it a positive six charge, or gain two to get to a um, to have a negative two charge? And obviously gaining two is a lot easier than losing six. So um, S Still will have 16 protons, but now it's going to gain two electrons that have argon's full outer shell. 16 minus 18 is a negative two charge. You can do this practice for any of the elements in columns 1, 2, 13, 15, 16, and 17 to figure out their charge. It's that simple. Just tell the number of electrons or protons, subtract the electrons that they want to get to, and you're good to go. For example, if you scroll, uh, look down, one, um, one row to selenium, SE number 34, it will still have a negative two charge because it wants to get to krypton, which is 36 electrons. 34 protons minus 36 electrons is a negative two charge. That whole column will have a negative two charge. Now let's go to periods. Periods are based on energy levels. So every row is an energy level, and each energy level can carry a certain amount of electrons. Two electrons go in the first energy level. Then it goes eight all the way down. So the octet rule is something you might have heard before. That's the rule that all the elements are trying to have a uh, lose or gain electrons to have a full outer shell, which usually is eight, unless you're talking about the first energy level. So let's do an example. Aluminum has 13 electrons because it's room, uh, it is in 
um, it is in it has 13 protons, so it must have 13 electrons. It's in column 13. Two in the first shell, eight in the second, third in the third, third three in the third. So it looks like that. So you can see that the electrons, uh, you can only fit so many in each energy level. Now, this is not what it wants. This is what it is on the periodic table. But it will, if it has a charge, it's going to change. It's going to get rid of those three. Instead of gaining five, get rid of those three. It's going to have a full outer shell of neon, which has 10 electrons. So instead of 13 electrons, it has 10. Therefore, it has a positive three charge because 13 protons minus 10 electrons is positive three. It's like neon. So I would adver advise you to go through this video again because that was pretty fast, but I'm going to do a couple more examples or some ideas, okay? So this is just kind of going through it a little bit. So practi for practice, if you look on the blue, you can see that the, so the charge of all 15, uh, group 15 elements. Since they're in group 15, they have five outer electrons. They're the fifth column if you ignore the transition metals that are columns 3 through 12. To get a full shell, they'll need three more. Uh, or they could lose five, which is easier, gaining three or losing five to get to eight. Obviously, gaining three. So gaining three more electrons. Each electron is negative, so gaining three will be a negative three charge. All elements in group 15 have a negative three charge. If a charge is, uh, what about like group two? Two means they have two outer electrons. So they have, if they have two outer electrons, they're going to get a full outer shell by either gaining uh, six to get to eight, because two plus six is eight, or losing two to get to eight, which is easier, obviously losing. So losing two electrons, they now have more protons than electrons. By two, they have a charge of positive two. Lastly, my last piece of advice, sometimes we distinguish ions from isotopes and it's a little bit challenging. Remember, protons never change. That's the identity of the element. So the only two other things that can change are, are going to be electrons and neutrons. Ions relate to electrons and isotopes relate to neutrons. So ions relate to electrons because that's the charge, and isotopes relate to neutrons because that's the mass. So on the left, in red, when it's an ion, you compare the protons to the electrons. On the right, you compare the protons to the neutrons of its mass. So an ion is when you lose or gain electrons. The more electrons you gain, the more negative, and the less electrons, or the more electrons you lose, I guess, the charge would be positive. All right? And on the right, if you are gaining neutron or just the neutron spool, randomly change, uh, that's an isotope. An isotope is the same element with, that has the same protons because it's the same element, but different amounts of neutrons. So that atomic mass has a decimal because there are different masses out there of that element. So try that out. See if that helps out a lot, okay? Hopefully that will um, make that a little bit easier to understand, all right?